invite uh, Jasmine from Belgian Embassy to say a word. Thank you, Jasmine. Jasmine, 
amekuambia kuhusu vipaumbele vya ubeliti na amesema kwamba kwa sasa hivi wanazungumzia sana shughuli za kilimo lakini shughuli zinazoleta kuendelea katika shughuli mbalimbali ambazo zinalenga msimu wa maisha kwa hiyo wakati mwafaka ambao tunakuwa na jadala huu kwa sababu hata serikali yao pia zaidi hizo tunazoangalia lakini kitu zaidi ana sema kwamba tuangalie hii kama namna ya kufunza kwamba ni namna gani tunaweza kuendelea kuzalisha bila kuharibu ardhi yetu na mifumo yetu bila kuharibu ngozi kama wakulima wa baadaye au kizazi cha baadaye nacho kumfaika mazingira yetu yale ya hicho ndio kitu ambacho tunaanzia nacho hii cha kwanza aliwashukuru kwa kuja wote na alieleza juu ya mambo pia tunafanyika kule Arusha kupitia shirika la rekoda na mjiwata kupitia pia ile ARD Pays na anashukuru sana uh, mwakilishi wa ARD Pays kwa sababu yeye ndiye aliyetoa wazo la kumalika mafumia katika pia uh, kuzungumza na sisi leo hayo ndio mambo makubwa ambayo uh, Jasmine amepeleza and now i thank you so much to to welcome uh, the next Uh, presenter who is uh, from IDP. We'll just say about IDP and now he's coming to talk to us.
sasa wa wawili wa mwisho ni sustainable agriculture Tanzania alafu kuanzia rekoda hawa watakuwa nao tena baadaye lakini na wale wakaribishwa wasalie na hata na sustainable agriculture Tanzania mtusalie tu baadaye utaongea
So let me take this opportunity now to welcome uh, the main speaker of today, Mark Sutina.
Production systems and farming systems to this increasing frequency and intensity. Farmers will have to change, of course, their practices, but in order to reviewed, mitigate the global. How? Of course, by reducing the greenhouse gas emission. Carbon. In industrialized country, it's not the first greenhouse gas. It's the third one. It's only plowing soil and doing, uh, deforestation. Deforestation. The first.
into biomass in first time and after that sequester carbon into soil into humus of soil why not with increasing the humus content humus level we can uh, increase the soil fertility fertility and at one go we are, we are able to sequester carbon and mitigate global warming reducing the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere. So, we know that carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas in surplus in the atmosphere, and it's the first contribution of agriculture at the world level it caused by deforestation in industrial country labor. When spraying synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, potent uh, contributor to global warming, uh, 300 times more than the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more potent gas. So we have to reduce, of course, this gas emission. That means modern agriculture, the agriculture for the future, so will not use synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, urea, sulfate of ammonium, sulfate of potash. Now, methane, of course, is the second one at the world level and in every country, and methane is emitted, uh, is emitted during the rumination of ghost and uh, sheep ruminants. Now, of course, climatic change will force farmers to set up more resilient farming system in order to avoid, we say, putting all the eggs in only one basket. It's too risky. So, the modern agriculture in the future will be a very diversified agriculture. Diversified at the farm level, diversified at the village level, diversified at the regional level of course, at the agrarian system level of course. But agriculture will be more diversified than today. The problem of industrialized country, they have, they have specialized a lot the agriculture with all the damages, food damages, environment damages. So, it's a past. Now, well, global warming already means progressive migration of numerous plants and it's true. Some birds, 200 kilometers. Some other, only one, 100 kilometers. But that, that means more ecological imbalance and we have to conceive new ecosystem, new agricultural ecosystem, new agro systems in order to adapt our living condition to their uh, very chaotic migration, different species in the same in, in one region for example. Now other aim not another. So we have to produce more per hectare in South Korea, which imports food. I think we have to produce more staple food by hectare. Of and maybe Israel's country will But how? I would like to present first the past mistakes. Past mistakes, mainly in industrialized countries, but also in some emerging countries like Brazil, like China, and so on. We have to analyze this past mistake. This past mistake, well, the intuition, the, the first idea is how can we develop, we have 
new agriculture in order to feed a growing population at the low monetary cost. Of course, if hunger results from poverty, the idea was well, to produce more at the low monetary cost. The idea is to but we we'll see the methods were very bad. So we tried first by increasing yield per hectare. Okay, I agree. The idea in poorer countries, maybe it's necessary to increase yield per hectare. But how? How? We, it's a problem. We, we tried to resolve this problem selecting select, selecting new varieties of crops new varieties of crops with very high genetic potential of yield per hectare and we say high yielding varieties i'm not sure that every time these varieties with very high genetic potential of yield per hectare help us to get to increase yield per hectare. Because we select these new varieties in campus, experimental campus, but we say all things being equal. The idea was to compare potent, genetic potential of varieties. So we have to assess yield of these different kinds of varieties, of course. But the gap between the difference between yields had to result from genetic potential didn't have to result from nematodes for this and another insect more weeds in this in this side more uh, harmful insects another side no we have to compare select varieties comparing these varieties all things being equal. Zero harmful insects, zero weeds, zero nematodes, zero fungi, zero, zero pest and disease. So yes, we got a lot of, no, not a lot, few, few uh, high yielding varieties, but these varieties required a lot of fertilizers in order to give this increased yield. And of course, they require a pesticide, pesticide, insecticide, in order to uh, protect from harmful insects, herbicides, that agrotoxins, uh, very, very bad molecules. And uh, we know we know very well that these uh, pesticide residues mainly are uh, endocrine disruptor. And we can predict for the young generation occurrence of cancer maybe 10 years before the people from my generation because of this exposition to pesticide residues. So, managing this high yield varieties, we I think it's a pass. Maybe we we'll have to promote other varieties, more diversified varieties, and more adapted to each region. Before, in the past, farmers had this ability to select a lot of varieties adapted to different environment. And now, with the, this green revolution, farmers are, are obliged to artificialize, to homogenize their agroecosystem, few agroecosystem similar to the campus, the experimental campus, in order to adapt their environment to very few varieties with high genetic potential. It's true. Of course, we caused a very high uh, imbalance uh, 
ecological imbalance. So, these few new varieties have proven to be demanding, have proven to be uh, with very high potential, of course, but demanding in terms of fertilizers and pesticides and very susceptible to pests and disease. The use of pesticides has contributed, has been contributing to multiple forms of pollution, air pollution, soil pollution, water pollution, and of course, with a biodiversity loss, with a reduction of biodiversity in our agroecosystem and a poor sanitary uh, quality of food. I think it's a very big mistake of the past, and we have to correct that. Okay. Now, second way was we tried we tried to to produce more at the lowest monetary cost by replacing workers, farmers, by making motors, robots, and so on. So, in order to increase the lead productivity, we, we promote mechanization, motorization, robot, robotization, specialization, extreme specialization, of our farming systems. And we know, of course, in order to get economies of scale, scale economies, of course, in order to produce at a lower cost. The idea, yes, was, was, uh, was smart, but uh, the methods, I think, we, we this kind of uh, mechanization and so on, labor force, wage labor force, Farmers' labor force has been replaced by motors, machines, robots, and we have been creating unemployment. Unemployment. Poor farmers. We cannot compete with motorization, with very motorized uh, agriculture. Rural Farmers who migrate to Chanty Town, unemployment, no income, hunger, and malnutrition. It's poverty, the main cause of hunger and malnutrition in the world, and the competition between very mechanized agriculture and poor farmers, small scale farmers, I think we have to resolve this problem. But I'm not sure that it's very, very good to replace national workers by imported uh, machines. For the national net income, I think the best is to do the best use of the national resource. National labor force. Why? Why have we to put this labor force in shanty towns without jobs? pesticides and how proliferation of insects, mutant insects, which can resist
the ecosystem designed, managed, implemented by Vivian. Agro ecosystems, agricultural ecosystems, agro ecosystems, agricultural ecosystems. Of course, we know that these agro ecosystems. I was a young agronomist, and of course, I was promoting this hybrid varieties, ERA, the first hybrid variety of rice from the uh, And of course, this variety required synthetic fertilizers. And this variety required the pesticides, of course. So I was promoting new varieties, synthetic fertilizers, and so on. And it was a very, very big mistake. Farmers had to explain, women, poor women, had to explain to me that in Russia, there is rice. Yes, sure, of course, rice. But there are fish, ducks, snails, frogs, and with my pesticides, with my synthetic fertilizers, in order to increase rice, I was killing ducks, fish, snails, frogs. This woman, this very woman, that I were a very bad agronomist. I didn't understand agronomy, of course. You see, they didn't talk of agronomy as a scientific discipline. But they explained me that the rice field is an agroecosystem, a very complex agroecosystem, with a lot of interaction of, uh, for example, they, they told me, well, this dirt is coming with but didn't affect rice to uh, to silicium rice. Ah, it's not so good for ducks. They explained that ducks were eating the harmful insects. And I was promoting pesticide. I was killing the source of protein. This farmers this woman told me it was my first my first course uh, in agrarian college when I was 50 years ago. Now maybe I'm a little 
So we need to recognize that the work object of farmers is not only that means one agricultural technique may have an impact on the whole agroecosystem. Agroecology, that means we have to take into account agroecosystem as a whole with many in interactions within this agroecosystem. The work object of farmers is always an agricultural ecosystem, agroecosystem. Each agricultural technique may have an impact on the whole agroecosystem. And so we have to take into account the interactions within the agroecosystem, the interactions between the physical environment and the living environment, of course, biosynthesis and biotope. And within the biosynthesis, within the biotope, we have to think into account the interaction, of course, between parent rocks, climate, uh, climate, soils, and so on. And, of course, within the biosynthesis, we have to take into account all these interactions between, between uh, all these species, wild species, domestic species, maybe plants, maybe uh, animals, maybe bacteria, many fungi, and so on. So agroecology is a scientific discipline which tries to better understand all this interaction in this very complex agroecosystem. And of course, farmers may inspire from the result of this, uh, this uh, discipline, scientific discipline. But maybe the agronomists have to learn from farmers, farmers, uh, we say farmers' tradition. I prefer to tell the farmers' experience. Parents from the past, but from the past, the peasants, the farmers, had selected a lot of variety, maybe uh, tolerant variety. Tolerant variety. So we have combined the result of a very scientific discipline with the woman, very poor woman, a set of practice. practices. So in the future, maybe we have to promote new farming systems, more in line with sustainable agricultural development, more in line, of course, with sustainable food systems. But the first need in our diet, energy. We need energy. We need to make a very, well, first principle is to make very intensive use, well, maybe we have to promote intensive agriculture per hectare the most renewable resource solar energy the resources in dioxide so the idea is that to make very intensive use of very abundant natural resources such as solar energy sunlight atmospheric carbon dioxide air, nitrogen, and so on, from uh, solar energy. And the very good news is that, and I've been told, that there is no shortage of sunlight expected for millennia. So the first idea is to use the most intensive view of this sunlight, of this solar energy. And you understand? That means we have to ensure the maximum plant cover of soil, of arable land. The maximum plant, plant cover with green leaves. We can intercept solar energy and after that convert into uh, food energy. Photosynthesis is this process whereby 
of solar energy is converted into food energy, you know all this very well. Leaves. That means the main problem is the rainwater management. That means, of course, we have plants, crops have to extract water from the soil in order to transpire, in order to sweep. And if there is a lack of water, we know that this crop will shut the stomata, will shut the small holes, and after that, they cannot transpire. So, as you say, but they cannot uh, implement photosynthesis. Plant needs to take in water and minerals from the soil. Plant needs to take in water from the soil in order to transpire. Okay. So, we need to avoid rainwater dripping. We have to enhance water infiltration. How? Plowing is what was a past of mistake. Now, earthworm, soil biology will help us in order to enhance infiltration. Well, we know that oxygen is released. Rainwater management. That means we have, of course, all that. So we need to lengthen the duration of crop photosynthesis, of crop transpiration, enhancing water infiltration. So we need to store as much water as possible in the top layer, of course. We have to prevent rainwater dripping. We have to promote infiltration. And we know that in order to hold this water at the roots level, we have to increase the humus content of soil. And we know that humus is a lot of carbon. And why? Uh, right. It's some techniques in West Africa in order to prevent the rain dripping. But very, very, uh, very, very effective to avoid rainwater dripping and promote rainwater uh, infiltration in soil. Now, we have to increase the humus content of soil. We have to produce humus, humus in order to fertilize soil and in order to sequester carbon from the carbon dioxide. So, we know that humus is made of 50% Carbon, it contains about 5% of nitrogen. The best ways are combining in the same plot some cereals and tubers with leguminous plants, which are able to fix nitrogen from the air. And the best way is to put litter for animals in order to produce manure, carbon from straw and stubble, nitrogen from urine. So we have to combine the carbon cycle, we have to combine the nitrogen cycle in the same plot with as associating animals, animal husbandry with cropping systems. We know that very well, but we have to help farmers in order to do that. So by doing this, the more soil is made for fertile, we have to manage carbon in short secrets, associating cropping and animal raising systems and well, producing manure, manure with trouble through urine and uh, animal strata. So composting, of course, may be a way in order to increase soil fertility and in order to sequester carbon from the carbon dioxide. Manure in Mali. But do that. It's a cut. The main problem Trouble, fodder, and uh, it's very, very small cars with very small wheels. But we can improve with big carts and with bigger wheels like that. We can produce 
composed, of course, we are in France, in, we are in Costa Rica, Health War are able to help us a lot in order to uh, the waste, the human waste, in order to convert this human waste into uh, compost Earth, with Earth War. Nitrogen fertilization, of course, we, we saw that chemical fertilizers, nitrogen fertilizers, it's the way of the past, the past way. It's a cost, very high cost and uh, uh, very bad greenhouse gas. So we have to avoid the synthetic nitrogen fertilizer and we have to use legumes. legumes. And you know that. Uh, La blab, uh, acacia, and so on are able, but no, rhizobium help these crops to fix nitrogen of air. 79% of nitrogen in the air. No shorted expectation of nitrogen over the coming years. We have to use a very intensive use of this nitrogen of the air, but by biological way now, of course. Leguminous, blah, blah, pigeon peas, beans, and incorporate into carbohydrate to make protein. It's so incorporate, incorporating nitrogen to carbohydrate in order to manufacture protein, of course, cost energy. But now, with leguminous, with rhizobium, we use solar energy and not. Uh, fossil fuels, okay, and after that, of course, the post-harvest residues will uh, are full of nitrogen, contribute to fertilize crop land. Now, okay, the production of synthetic nitrogen fertilizers too expensive and too uh, emitters of greenhouse. Mineral fertilization. We need calcium. We need potassium. We need phosphorus. And the main threat, the main threat is shortage of phosphorus. How can we do to correct that? I think we maybe we can use trees with roots. This extract mineral elements from the bedrock, from the parent rock, and after that. These mineral elements to leave, and when fully leaves, able to fertilize the soil, the top layer of soil. So we have to take phosphorus, potash, calcium from the subsoil and put it in the top layer of soil. And with tree with deep roots, and we can be helped by mycorrhizal fungus, of course. Mycorrhizal fungus takes the energy from sugar, from carbohydrate, from carbohydrate of trees or annual crops. But these mycorrhizal fungi are able to extract mineral elements from clay, and after that, they We can use agroforestry, we can use spreading spores of mycorrhizal uh, fungi. If we spray spores of mycorrhizal fungi, that means we don't have to against pest and disease. of salt. So, mycorrhizal fungi that return these they have obtained first the energy, the carbohydrates. Now, we are in semi-arid region in West Africa. You can compare here, below trees, and not below. What do you think? Yield is higher below trees, of course. If we can avoid desertification, 
Mary, Ellie, Ali, Niger, and so on. Some tweet are able to help us a lot. Agro forestry in the dry season. This tree uh, has got uh, leaves uh, in the rainy season, leaves fall down, and after that, we can grow annual crop, maize, sorghum, uh, pigeon peas, and so on. Control of pests and pathogens. Of course, we have to spray auxiliary insects in order. Auxiliary insects, we can compete or we can, uh, we can eat some harmful insects, for example. But it's better to maintain a very high biodiversity in our, our ecosystem in order to raise, to raise, obviously, this auxiliary insect. That means diversification. Diversification of domestic species, diversification of wild species in each animal ecosystem in order to prevent pests and disease. We can grow many different crops in rotational cropping system, in cropping association. So we don't use pesticides, and that means, what does that mean? We practice inspired by the agroecology scientific discipline and inspired by uh, farmers' experiments of empirical research of farmers combining these two kinds of knowledge, no doubt we have alternative to the industrial agriculture, we will be able to, to produce more safe food for everybody in this country, technical Technical solution. We know, we know, as the Trump Association, uh, permaculture in France, uh, agroforestry in Kerala, India, uh, ducks and rice fields raised in Vietnam. In France now, to actually, we learned from Vietnam, in France, French have learned a lot from Vietnamese experience. Uh, this small animal robot with energy solar, no, no eradicate weed. You see, the future agriculture will not eradicate. No, only we have to reduce proliferation. We have to reduce damage of this pest and disease. But now, we don't eradicate, we maintain a high biodiversity in each agroecosystem. And this small animal help us a lot, of course, solar energy. And of course, China combining two varieties of rice in the same small plot. No, very modern. So, as a pinata, in order to fertilize rice fields in China, and so on, and so on. So, and energy, no, 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 fossil fuel, no energy, so only water in order to irrigate rice in China. So, we know that. There is no lack of technical alternative. The problem is agricultural policy in order to promote this kind of sustainable agricultural development, a pathway toward a sustainable food system. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Asante Sa. Naomba tumpigie tena makofi moja mbili tatu. Thank you much. You can take a seat for a while. Indeed, as uh, Professor Karim Webo said, no one would regret because we have all heard about uh, we have heard uh, from what Mark had for us. And now I will take this opportunity to quickly summarize in Swahili so that uh, those who cannot follow English will also catch the main points. Mark Amesema Mambo Yafuatayo 
na niombe tu wakati nayaandaa haya kama kuna mtu ana swali kwa maki aliandike ilo swali atamuuliza baadaye if there is anyone with a question to mark he will be ready to answer it just jot it down and you will have an opportunity to ask later on kwa hiyo maki ameanza kwa kuzungumzia katika dunia yetu siku ya dunia yetu ya sasa amezungumzia kuongezeka kwa joto akazungumzia ajali mbalimbali au madhara mbalimbali yatokanayo na mabadiliko ya tabia nchi kwa mfano hivi katika tumesikia changamoto za mvua nyingi Dar es Salaam kati ya jana na juzi amezungumzia changamoto za namna hiyo akazungumzia na akazungumzia umaskini lakini vile vile amezungumzia changamoto ya ukosefu wa ajira ambayo inatokana pia na kilimo hiki cha viwanda na anaunganisha changamoto ya kukosa ajira na kilimo cha viwanda kwamba kilimo hiki kinahitaji mashine na mashine zinapokuepo basi watu wanaohitaji kufanya kazi wanapungua kwa hivyo mwisho wa siku tunapata changamoto ya ajira lakini akasema kilimo kinachangia changamoto tunazoziona kwa maeneo makuu matatu moja ukataji miti ovyo hilo ni namba moja ambalo kilimo kina wakulima au shughuli za kilimo zinachangia katika changamoto hizo ambazo amezitaja lakini matumizi yaliyokithiri ya mbolea zenye nitrogen zile mbolea tunazotumia kama chumvi chumvi au sulfate of ammonia zile mbolea kama urea mbolea hizo ukitumia nasema matumizi yaliyokithiri yani ile unatumia tu na unachukua kiganja kimoja unaweka kwenye shina la nyanya bila kufuata utaratibu unaotakiwa yale matumizi ya namna ile yanachangia changamoto zile alizozitaja na ya tatu ni gas inayoitwa methane ambayo inatokana na mifugo ile ambayo tunaifuga kwa hiyo kumbe na kilimo kina nafasi yake kwenye changamoto hizi ambazo tunaziona za kuongezeka joto mabadiliko ya tabia nchi kwa jumla na hata uharibifu wa bioanuwai lakini kitu muhimu ambacho amekisema wakati anahitimisha kipengele hicho ni kwamba ni lazima haya yafikie mwisho. Yaani lazima tufike mahali tuseme kwamba changamoto hizi au matatizo haya yamefika mwisho. Na ametukumbusha kuhusu makosa yaliyofanyika siku za nyuma. Amesema ni kwamba ilipoonekana idadi ya watu inaongezeka hatua zilizochukuliwa ni kujaribu kuongeza ushaji kwa namna ya kilimo cha viwanda. Kwa hiyo zimetumika mbinu za kuzalisha mbegu mbalimbali zinazozaa sana. Lakini mbegu hizi baadaye zikawa zinahitaji kemikali nyingi. Zinahitaji polea kwa wingi sana, lakini zinahitaji madawa ya viwanda kwa wingi. Na mwisho wa siku basi changamoto watu walipohangaika kuzalisha kwa wingi wakitumia mbolea na madawa mengi wakaingia kwenye changamoto nyingine ambazo ni za uharibifu wa yanuai lakini zikapelekea chakula ambacho tunazalisha kuwa cha ubora duni kwa sababu tunatumia mno madawa ya viwandani na kama nilivyosema kikapelekea pia changamoto ya kupungua kwa ajira kubwa zaidi ni magonjwa ambayo yanawakumba binadamu siku za za, za, za leo ambayo yanahusianishwa na matumizi makubwa ya kemikali katika kilimo sasa hayo ameaita ni makosa tuliyofanya tulikotoka 
na baada ya hapo akatueleza sasa kilimo ikiolojia ndio njia ya kutatua hayo ambayo tuliyakosea sasa kwa hivyo kwanza amesema kilimo kwa kulima sio mifumo ya sio sio atio ya asili kwa asilimia mia moja amesema kwamba tuna kazi ya kufanya ili kuona teknolojia na kufika huko kwanza tunatakiwa tutambue e, science ya kilimo hiki kwamba hapa kuna tunayo ardhi lakini pia tuna viumbe hai na hivi vitu vinahusiana vinapenda pamoja kwa hiyo wakati wote unapofanya jambo lolote haya mahusiano ya ndogo kati ya ardhi na viumbe hai hii ardhi tunayoiona kule na viumbe hai lakini huku juu pia kuna viumbe hai kwa hiyo tutamwona mwingiliano ardhi au mazingira yetu kwa ujumla na viumbe hai kwa hiyo jambo lolote unalofanya kwa mazingira ufanye ukitambua hilo. Ina maana kama utapiga sumu nyingi sana ukumbuke kwamba kuna hiyo kuna madhara unaleta kwa viumbe hata ambao huwatarajia. Unafikiri na unaua wadudu wadhifu lakini kuna viumbe hai wengine vile vile. Ni kuwa na mifumo ni kuwa na mifumo endelevu ya kilimo mifumo endelevu ya kilimo ndio hiyo inayotambua kwamba na viumbe hai na katika ardhi na viumbe hai. Kwa hiyo kila unachokifanya tambua kwamba hivi vitu vinashirikiana. Hakuna hata kimoja kinaweza kuishi peke yake. Lakini ameendelea kusema kwamba wakulima na wataalamu inabidi kushirikiana na ifike mahali pia wataalamu wajifunze kutoka kwa wakulima. Kwa uzoefu mwingi ni vizuri wataalamu wakajifunza kutoka kwa vile vile wajifunze kutoka kwa Anapo kilimo au mifumo endelevu ya kilimo amezungumza zaidi kuhusu matumizi bora ya rasilimali asilia rasilimali kwa mfano mwanga wa jiwa huu anaangalia sana kuhusu umuhimu wake katika kilimo lakini amezungumzia maji nitrogen inapatikana pia kwenye hewa lakini anazungumzia pia hewa ya ukaa ambayo iko kwenye hewa lakini ameweza kwamba ni namna gani tunaweza kutumia hizo rasilimali asilia kwa namna bora kwa tija tukitaka kutumia nitrogen kwa mfano amesema inabidi tuwe tunapanda mazao ya mikunde mazao ya jamii ya mikunde kwa hiyo kuna wale watu wanalima ngwara ni mikunde watu wanalima baadhi hizo ni baadhi ya aina za mazao ambayo ni ya aina ya mikunde ambayo ina uwezo wa kuichukua nitrogen ambayo iko kwenye hewa na kuifanya kwa matumizi ya mimea na baadaye uzalishaji mkubwa bila madhara makubwa lakini amesema kwenye maji tujifunze kuvuna maji ya mvua maji ya mvua. Bahati nzuri wakulima wengi sasa wanavuna maji kwa namna wanavyochimba mashina ya mazao yao hata kwa namna wanavyohifadhi maji mashamba. Kwa hiyo amesisitiza hilo sana. Na vile vile amezungumzia matumizi ya mbolea za asili kama samadi, mbodi na hizo zitasaidia kushikilia maji kama ukishavuna maji ya mvua ili yakae kwa muda mrefu 
basi ardhi ile ikiwa na samadi au ngoji maji yale yanakaa mrefu zaidi vile vile amezungumzia swala la kuhakikisha kwa yanapenya kwa kina zaidi kwenda ardhini kwa hiyo hii namna ambavyo tunalima pengine hayataenda sana au kichimba kashimo kadogo tu pengine hayataenda sana au kiachia mifugo ikakanyaga sana kwenye ardhi inawezekana maji ya kiji yakapita tu lakini amesisitiza sana maji ivue kinyesha tuwe na utaratibu wa kuhakikisha kwamba yale maji yanaingia chini badala ya kupotea halafu akazungumzia umuhimu wa kuendesha kilimo ndani kwa pamoja kwa hiyo kama unalima mazao mbalimbali waza pia ufugaji ili uweze kupata samadi lakini amezungumzia pia matumizi ya mazao yenye mizizi mirefu ili uweze kuchukua virutubisho ambavyo viko chini sana kwenye ardhi ambavyo mazao au kamichi ambazo zinaji na mizizi ya hapa juu hazitaweza lakini kuna mazao ambayo yanaweza kwenda mpaka chini kuchukua virutubisho na hapa amezungumzia pia kilimo mseto. Kuna miti unaweza kupanda sambamba mazao na ikasaidia sana katika kilimo chako. Ametoa picha mbalimbali zinazoonyesha mazao yanayofanya yanayofanya vizuri yanapokuwa yanayofanya sahihi. Sio miti yote inaweza kutumia mazao yote. Ipo miti sahihi ya kutumia na hiyo za kitu cha kusema. Watakuja hapa tutaongozana kuhusu mambo ya kusema ili tuongee tuongee muda na ili pia zaidi. And the other one is Janet from Nabo Agriculture Tanzania. We 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 expected to have a representative from the government. Unfortunately, she had an urgent activity in Roma, so she is not here. But uh, before before we start this session, let me say that um, if you have any question, you keep it. I will ask. But I want to talk to Mr. Ili. He is sitting in Kohaba and I am here. Come on, Mr. Housing for the Manawaka Logan and the Yanisha. 
Sinayapoy ko haba by the next. Now, now, let me, let me now, the first uh, speaker for this professor to talk on research training by school university of agriculture, but with reference to agroecology. Atazunguzia safiti na mafuyo balibali ya kama kajitwa na chukwa na sikuwa ni kakimo Hasa kwenye suwala ya kimo mchengu mdia Profesa Karibu Stronger Universities, uh, which was by then in the second phase, and uh, had three academic thematic areas, one of which was uh, agricultural values, uh, anchored in the School of Agricultural Economics and Business Studies. Another one was aquaculture, which is anchored in the Department of Animal, Aquaculture and Range Sciences in the College of Agriculture. And the third one was anchored science and horticulture, also in the field of agriculture and uh, the leader of that thematic area since then. There was also an administrative and uh, thematic area which dealt with financial and information management system. And the BSU activities of the agricultural thematic area Ecology Hub in Tanzania was uh, funded by McNair, while B. Now, since uh, the establishment of the hub, the area and the hub are in, in collaboration on many different activities, though we have different uh, objectives, so to speak. We are a key player in knowledge creation and creation, and therefore our overall purpose in the promotion of agroecology is to develop human capacity that can use agroecological practices and activities to address the needs of farmers, uh, both crop, crop farmers, as has been alluded to by uh, the speaker, but also not forgetting traders as well as consumers, because. Uh, we are taking the whole value chain from production to, co to consumption. So we, I want to give you just the major milestones because we have very little time. I want to talk about the agenda through a consultative process with the stakeholders in government, NGO, farmers, and other practitioners who have been able to develop an agroecology research agenda, which is in final stages of refinement. And we have identified as the first one. The second one is sustainable intensification of crop life aspects under these uh, main.
that we do is attach our students to these institutions include uh, some of these representatives. We also conduct short training. These institutions include uh, some of these representatives. We also conduct short training. And we have several players in agroecology, and uh, that we have activities like stakeholder workshops. to discuss of mutual interest as far as agroecology is concerned. Projects which are usually collaborative, we supported development of the PhD curriculum as a but also we are supporting training and research of two uh, academic staff to conduct their PhD. They are already registered under this program. And then we have the SUA Suicide Research Agreement on uh, Agroecology Research and Advocacy and other partners, including SAT. Uh, again, we have the students registered at SUA. is uh, anchored in the Department of uh, Crop Science. And then we had an AgroVeg project, which is a comparative study on the impact of agroecological and conventional practices and management of fruit flies. And I think you know, we have a big problem with mangoes and other fruits with this fruit fly. Uh, this is a project funded by the Belgian Corporate and we have a representative here. We another project which is anchored in the Department of Animal Sciences on enhancing rangeland productivity, uh, particularly targeting the management of the Congo weed. And as I'm talking, there are other proposals at different levels of development. And number four, uh, we want to contribute to policy change towards a formal recognition of agroecology so that we can build capacity in a, in a, in a, in a more organized manner. And therefore we realize that uh, agroecology hinges on many sectors. We have water, you have industry, you have uh, many different uh, uh, sectors, but also because if you want to market products that are safer, but as I'm talking, there's no policy. SUA is an academic institution. We have taken that matter up together with our uh, partners and other stakeholders. And therefore, the hub has, has taken a forefront to address this matter by commissioning a study.
lakini amesema pia eh, sio ya kiserikali kwa mfano kwenye huu mradi una ecology hub kuna sustainable agriculture lakini pia kuna la recorder kwamba pamoja na mambo mengine uh, cha kuchoe kucha sokoni cha kilimo kwa kushirikiana wanafanya uchechemuzi wa kisera ili kufika mahali sera zinazozungumzia kilimo cha ekolojia. Kwa hiyo hayo ni mambo makuu aliyoyasema Professor Spuga. Na sasa nitamkaribisha mwingine another speaker who is Janet from Sustainable Agriculture Tanzania. Sokoni University of Agriculture has, is collaborating with Sustainable Agriculture Tanzania in many ways, but one important one is uh, the so-called participatory uh, action research. There is an activity being conducted in a collaborative effort between SUA and SAT, which involves researchers and farmers coming together, identifying problems together, collecting data together, and eventually uh, looking at the findings together and considering possible solutions together. That has been a very good activity that I've, I've, I've been there and uh, those who have been there. Also, Professor Chove is, is aware of this program. So, Janet, please take the floor. Janet will talk about engagement of Sustainable Agriculture Tanzania with farmers in the Ministry of Agriculture Training Institutes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Malisa. Again, all protocols of introduced myself previously. My name is Janet Maro. I am Chief Executive Officer Programs at Sustainable Agriculture Tanzania. And um, Sustainable Agriculture Tanzania started work in 2009. We have had a very good, uh, we have had very good, a little over 10 years working in the field of agroecology, especially from the onset. And that's why you will find that uh, SAT pops up very often, especially when you talk about agroecology, organic agriculture, because of our kind of pioneering work in this field. Um, as Dr. Malisa mentioned, we have collaborations with Sokoinde University of Agriculture on the participatory action research implement in collaboration with uh, where we have farmers in their problems and we normally deliberations and then the and the results are later presented in the field but also on this same platform. So that's one of the uh, very important pieces of work that we are doing. Research, the research done addresses how uh, much effort that is put into research. This is a field that I would like uh, all of us to really think about and also bring our efforts together to see how we can push that forward. Also. of diverse mountains that are grown organically with uh, 
and now we now we're starting to work on making the Uluguru Mountains a hundred percent of Uluguru Mountains are important for biodiversity, but also as important, uh, sources of water uh, for Morogoro but also for Dar es Salaam. We know that the Uluguru Mountains have the Wamiruvu Basin. Uh, have the Wamiruvu. The Wamiruvu Basin is here in Morogoro, but we have the source of the Rufu River here in Morogoro and on the Uluguru Mountains. So we believe it's very important and Dar es Salaam depends on water from the Uluguru Mountains. So it's a very important role that we have to play and we believe if we have them organic, they will have more water for a longer time but also we will have more healthy and nutritious food for the people in the mountains but also for us in the cities. Yanzi Village, Lubungo Ward, and I'm very happy because we have our ward executive officer here. And uh, with this first center for agroecology in the country, we train over a thousand people, over a thousand people as of 2020 every year in various courses, and they're mostly short courses. We receive them from Tanzania and also outside Tanzania. We do a lot of experience and knowledge. Uh, knowledge and uh, with our farmer training center, currently we have a team of 65 people occupying the center for the next two weeks and working on reviewing six curricula, uh, six curricula for uh, different courses, mechanization, irrigation, planning, horticulture, crop production, and food and nutrition. So this Curriculars, these are curricula under the Ministry of Agriculture and they are for tertiary institutes that train certificate and diploma level students and currently undergoing review. We've carried out a labor analysis. We started this process in May this year and so far we have finished the labor market analysis thanks to all those who collaborated and participated on the local review together with the Ministry but also we do that with Sokoine University of Agriculture. We collaborate with agroecology and uh, we're currently in agroecology University of Agriculture. Agriculture Training Institutes, we 
also um, environmental management, as well as gender in the curriculum for agriculture, which is uh, significant milestones, and we make sure that uh, future graduates who will be extension to work in agriculture in their training institutes, and they will be able to As you know, there has been the review process of the National Agriculture Already in 2013, there was a statement on organic agriculture in the agriculture policy. But with this current process that is going on, we, uh, we, we have a policy, uh, policy, policy and planning team from the Ministry of Agriculture to make the existing statement in the incorporate uh, agroecology general and so we are calling it ecological organic EOA and that it will be featured in the policy as ecological ecological organic agriculture in its broad sense and featuring the principles of organic farming the principles of agroecology and sustainable agriculture so briefly, that's what I wanted to share this morning with you all. Thank you very much. And uh, I will make a quick translation. So I will make a quick translation in Kiswahili of what I just said very quickly. Basi, habari za sinena. Kama ni vojitambulisha internet na kwa tafiti. Tafiti. Kulima labda na hata wa tafiti wa mradi ambao wako wapa. Ni kwa namba tafiti. ambapo tunashirikiana na wizimu katika kuhakikisha kwamba katika ayo rasimishwa basi ina ngele vya maswala ya jinsia
But impact which have so we found answer those two questions and Which they have put just when we 
So this is part of the advocacy. All the time we try to put the t-shirts, we try to have banners, yeah, about that our making security history in Tanzania. So now everyone will say that is their aim. In the audience, do this policy analysis to tell them what we need to be and right. And also we have service providers like government and small scale. And also we have NGOs. So we meet them in different areas. And the is about also to mold those technologies in order to be able to reach Ah, it, ah, okay. We make because we say uh, agroecology cutting across different agroecological zones and the farming systems. So once we create, we have that situation analysis, we come up with what we call basket of options, and we say by implementing these items, these technologies, we'll be able to explore the opportunities which have found. The challenges also which have. So it's not to look at potentials, as he has said also about rainwater harvesting. We can harvest water, we can use it. So um, we find that who is going to deliver that message, that is very important. So for the case of policy, we found that we can work well with the Sokoine. We, we have makers from the ministry and we have been with them and we have told them this this is with the process but also the repatch approach we try to build a basic and be able to carry the message we try to make a uh, uh, extension uh, uh, on those DD farmers to become social entrepreneurs and community change agents where be able to the village for quite a long time longer time sure that the, 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 of the project which is doing well but just after just after the project has phased out the project has ceases there so we cannot have the development
ule utaalam za namna gani tukasema tunapeleka kwa njia ya sembra
But he uh, is worried because. Uh, but he uh, is worried because uh, to be difficult because they might like uh, I I not if I got a question correctly, but it was kind of. Sometimes 
Asante. Jana tutatafsiri wakati mjibu. Kuna swali kule nyuma. Karibu. Mtambulishe alafu endelea.
Asante sana. Basi tusikilize hayo kama nafasi itapatikana tutarudia round nyingine. So please members of the panel uh, I will allow you now to respond. But uh, before you do that may I request the us to allow the vice chancellor to leave because he has some some activities to attend to which are urgent. Please sir, I think they have allowed you. Okay, so we will start with the uh, mark. It seems like we have many questions compared to the rest. So, please, can you go through the questions? You want to use this mic? associate animal raising systems with cropping systems and so on. But in many cases we support with the NGO support of course. And the main problem and it's support of NGO and scientific too. It's possible to improve this kind of farming system very very diversified. But the problem is how could we scale up this practice, I think. Support of NGO, obvious, is in many cases necessary. But change in agricultural policy way, uh, is very necessary too. I think it we need, in order to scale up this kind of agriculture, I think, to uh, change agricultural policies in many, many countries. I can explain a little more after. How quickly do we produce more food without eradicating allergies? So, I think it's different crops. The same than crops. So we doesn't no access solar energy. It's a method to see wheat want to but we Organic 
culture which has a standard. standard. We, we do okay. Agroecology is, is an approach. For example, biopesticide. Biopesticide is recommended by for uh, organic agriculture. So wait, it's not, it's better than synthetic biopesticide. But the biopesticides remain a pesticide. The agroecological approach helps farmers to avoid pesticides, any categories of pesticides. Synthetic pesticides and biopesticides. The idea is no, no pesticide, synthetic or not. Agroecological is approach. Maybe, maybe the south of Tanzania, and we told that Philadelphia is really though in the picture, very useful, very useful.
So whatever opportunities they have to protect them course in cleaning water when uh, farming is done without proper uh, proper soil water conservation measures there is a lot of erosion and so they, for them it's of interest to have the Uluguru mountains a hundred percent organic and farmers putting up uh, terraces and doing sustainable land management so as to have uh, and more clean water coming down to Less contaminated water and agrochemicals contaminating the water. So this is uh, is from different uh, different. Of course, every place. Has
how do they uh, plan their work schedules and all. Well, again, it's a and it's not, and uh, extension officers not being trained on organic agriculture and being in the pool of experts that provide that provide and support technical farmers as they is a general. That's why we to work a lot with extension officers you all a picture, I will kindly ask any extension officers who are present here to at least put up their hands so we know any extension officers, Mafisa Ugani, Namba Tupunge Mkono, because these are the who reach out to farmers and so we them we provide to get on agriculture and organic agriculture. Then there was another question the normal prices that exist in the market, so be it if it's a conventional product or an agroecologically grown product. And in the you have everybody product. Thank you very much. And the, uh, yeah, yeah, we na mtaweza kuya hawa watu mtaweza kuwauliza kwa namna mbalimbali mbali. naomba tuta tutafiki tutaishia hapo kwa, ma, kwa maana ya maswali kwa sababu ya muda lakini niseme tu kwa dakika moja tu kwamba Mark ali alisema yafuatayo kwa ufupi sana kwamba mwingiliano wa viumbe hai na visivyo hai na zile tulizungumzia masuala ya ardhi na viumbe vingine viumbe hai vilivyoko chini na juu 
Dr. Mbali aliuliza kwamba ni nani anayeoza huo mwingiliano au nani anaye usimamia au anayeweza kuathiri kwa namna moja au nyingine au kuboresha na Maki alijibu kwamba sana sana ni wakulima wakisaidia au wakisaidiana na taasisi au na mashirika yasiyo ya kiserikali kwa anazungumzia namna ambazo tuna, tuna, tunaweza kuzitumia ku, kuweza pia kupata chakula cha kutosha na kinachotakiwa tu ni kufuata kuzingatia matumizi bora ya rasilimali alisi akasema kwa mfano ukitumia kilimo hiki cha e, kuchanganya mazao una una unaokoa mambo mengi unapunguza gharama za kupalilia kwa sababu kinapunguza magugu lakini hata tukitumia nguvu za jua zinaweza kutusaidia katika mambo mengi na yeye anaamini kwamba tukizingatia hayo na mengine aliyoyaelekeza tutaweza kupata chakula cha kutosha bila mashaka yoyote kuhusu aina ya miti amesema kila eneo linaweza kuwa kubali bali na mahala pengine kwa maana nyingine ni kwamba ni vizuri ukazingatia tu unakotoka wa basi tukauliza ni miti ipi ambayo inaendana na kilimo hiki na ipo kwa kweli bahati nzuri kila mahali Tanzania miti hii ipo lakini ukiona una mashaka kidogo uliza mkulima mwenzio au uliza wataalamu ambao wako karibu na wewe ili usipande miti ambayo hayoani na mazao mengine na But uh, one is uh, that we are having quite a number of students coming from those institutes to this here at Sokoene University and the, the researches that are conducted by these students under the supervision of SUA instructors or researchers that is one of the collaboration but also Sokoene University is collaborating directly with these agricultural research institutions uh, in implementing various research projects. So she said uh, one of the main uh, tasks ahead of SUA is to build the capacities. Therefore, uh, the university has done uh, has done so for many research institutes uh, staff but also for students coming from elsewhere ringo also contributed regarding uh, the way uh, women or youth or women and youth are involved in various activities related to agroecology and he said the approach of recorder is to make sure that for any project 50% are women and the all females are not so good in gender but they are but uh, as for youth chains so wherever they see an opportunity they are encouraged to participate but also recorder is promoting highly paying activities like uh, banana production which are fairly are fairly acceptable by the youth those in short per person to say his or her final word anything that 
you, you, you consider as a take home message for, for, for the people who are here. I will start with Mark all the way to Janet. Please, Mark. Karibu. Oh, thank you. It's not a conclusion, it's maybe, uh, maybe it's a belief. But I'd like to say, I tell you that I think farmers. will be able to implement and will be able to provide to, to feed properly uh, the world and provide uh, safe food. Inawezekana kwa wakulima kuzalisha chakula chakula kwa kutumia kilimo cha ujia. Um, as an academic organization we have developed the 10 elements of agroecology uh, which guide us in the activities that we conduct and, and enable the participants to really appreciate the advantages that go with the adoption of agroecological practices. So, and since we are also embarking on developing curricula to, so that we can have uh, human resources that are well versed with the agroecological principles and this, uh, status of the Center of Excellence in Agroecology. Yes. Kilimo cha ekolojia kimekuja, juhudi hizi zimekuja kwa wakati muafaka. Hata wadau wa maendeleo, wa shirika wa maendeleo, mashirika ya kimataifa kama FAO na kadhalika wanayazungumzia kwa eh, kwa, kwa hivi. Chuo kikuu cha sokoine cha kilimo, kwa sambamba ana unaona hata eh, shahasho hapa na mwelekeo kwenye eneo hilo ambalo nilo, karibu dunia nzima inalizungumzia karibu ringo asante sana daktari mimi ningesema uh, sisi wote ni wadau tuwe watu ambao tunaamini mabadiliko ya leo na sisi ndio kubadilisha. Uh, mara nyingi uh, ujumbe ninaotaka kutoa kwa, kwa kila mmoja uh, ni kwamba tusifikiri labda sati ndio wanaohusika na kilimo hai au ki, kilimo cha ekolojia. Kwa hiyo sati mbona hawajafika huku sati mbona hawajafanya hivi? Kile tunachokifahamu tukifanye. Ndivyo ambavyo tunaweza tukapeleka ujumbe kwa njia rahisi. Na sisi tukiwa mabadiliko tunayoamini tutawavuti. Watu wana wanabadilika kwa kuwa waambie wanabadilika kwa kukuangalia asante sana it is every business everyone at, at, in, in your path do not wait for sat or any other organization successful because other people will learn from you karibu janet Uh, thank you for this opportunity and um, my concluding remark is that really in the 21st century uh, it's more important to very important in this century so I call upon all of us to join efforts to collaborate and work together because no single person no single organization can do everything so we need to collaborate and to co-create scale up uh, agroecology and uh, also, I will say the same in Kiswahili. Katika karne hii ya ishna moja, vitu vya ukushirikiana na ukushirikiana, lakini pia kutaweza vitu kwa pamoja ni vya msingi sana. Na hivyo, tuendele kushirikiana, 
na kwa pamoja tuweze kuleta mabadiliko katika kilimo hai na kilimo cha kiikolojia Thank you Janet. Thank you very much. Naomba sasa tu wapongeze wote waliozungumza hapa, waliotuongoza pamoja na wale waliozungumza huko kwa makofi matatu, moja, mbili, tatu. So thank you very much and I wish now to take some other seats because now we are moving to the last samahani kidogo mwenye simu tafadhali
प्रश्न we need to make sure that we produce enough for to feeding these people at all levels you also talked about high quality uh, standard uh, high quality sanitary food this takes us to health and all living organisms